Horror novels have been essential reading since, well, the novel was invented. For folks who want to get a little deeper into a story or really, really love world building, it is the perfect vehicle for just that kind of stuff. Plus, you can't get jump scared while reading. That's far as I know. However, there are some visual aspects of horror that simply cannot be translated into the written word. Thankfully, graphic novels exist, and horror graphic novels? They're wicked. So sit back, relax, and let me recommend some pictorial paperbacks for you to peruse next time you're feeling fearless. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're talking about the top five scary graphic novels that you need to read. Before we get started, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more pernicious page turners. Just a heads up, I'm not going to include any manga on this list, as we've done a few scary horror manga videos, and I want to keep things fresh. Yes, we all know who Junji Ito is at this point. Perfect! Let's get going. Coming in at number 5, we've got From Hell, an eerily illustrated tale of Jack the Ripper written by Alan Moore and illustrated by Eddie Campbell. What else could you ask for? From Hell is the story of the world's most famous serial killer and the events that caused such speculation around the murders. The story kicks off during the Whitechapel murders of the late Victorian era. Moore blends history with educated speculation in order to weave a terrifying tale of royal cover-ups, Freemason visions, and brutal violence. While From Hell does cover plenty of real events, it also serves as a character study of a high-ranking Freemason. Gull. He's employed by the royal family to cover up a scandalous matter and ends up going a little mad with power. After realizing that a group of prostitutes was aware of a baby with royal connections, he and a carriage driver enact a vicious campaign of violence against them. For those familiar with the Whitechapel murders, this will sound a little familiar. It even includes the origin of the famous From Hell letter, which made Jack the Ripper a household name at the time. Even beyond the business aspects of his murder, Gull envisions a future long after his violent acts are done. He sees a world where masculine masculinity has totally dominated femininity, supposedly thanks to his reign of terror. He even manages to see the work he's inspired through visions, like copycat killers and morbid artists interested in serial killers. While not totally historically accurate, From Hell is a fascinating read with plenty of insight into the Whitechapel murders and Jack the Ripper himself. The black and white art is often grim and grisly and accentuates the tale well. If you're wondering if it's gruesome enough for you, just know that it was banned in Australia for weeks after some customs officers seized copies headed to quality comics. If it's getting banned in Australia, you know there's some good stuff in there. Coming in at number 4, we've got Harrow County. Now, for something totally different, we have a beautifully rendered tale of reincarnated witches and sentient skin. Oh yeah. Written and illustrated by Cullen Bunn and Tyler Crook, Harrow County is a fascinating little number full of gorgeous, if not horrifying, monsters. Or haints, as they like to call them. Each haint, while monstrous, seems to have a personality that's brought out by Emmy, the reincarnation of witch Hester Beck. All done up in gorgeous watercolors, this is a world full of secrets just waiting to be discovered. Most of these haints will remain hidden until they want to be seen, and some are smarter than others. They might greet you head on and try to make use of you for their own purposes. The monsters you'll get to know the best though are from the family. See, the world of Harrow County goes back, way back. Famous witches and warlocks and other magical beings have been reincarnated for ages, with each new iteration taking over the tasks performed by the last. They all feel duty-bound to continue their work, sometimes leading them to act ruthlessly and crudely. Oh, and the way they gain more power is pretty filthy, so maybe don't head in on a full stomach. If you like varied monsters, vile prophecies, and southern fried accents, give Harrow County a read. There's a big omnibus coming in the New Year, so if you can wait till then, you might save a little cash, too. Coming in at number three, we've got witches. We've got some more witches in store for you, but these are a little different. Writer Scott Snyder pens a fascinating portrait of these supernatural creatures. They're not the green-skinned, pointy-hat-wearing cat lovers we're all familiar with. They don't turn people to newts expecting that they'll get better. No, these are witches with a Y. Much worse, much more sinister. These witches wait deep in the woods and let the desires deep in people's hearts bring tributes and victims to their doorstep. This series focuses on the Rook family and their missteps. After their daughter Sailor was aggressively bullied, the bully mysteriously disappeared. This led to plenty of rumors and forced the Rooks to leave town and start fresh. However, some of the little birdies followed them, making the adjustment even more difficult. And if that wasn't bad enough, the Rooks have pretty much no idea about the supernatural secrets the town is hiding. Beneath the forest dwells a society of witches Witches, beings who the locals sacrifice people to in exchange for priceless boons. If you smear someone with green goop and ask for something in exchange, the witches will snatch up the pledge and grant your wish. This leads to some terrible betrayals of trust and horrific reveals. The illustrations by Jock of Batman and Wolverine fame are striking and accentuate the dark story well. 
If you weren't afraid of the woods before, you will be after reading this. Coming in at number two, we've got Black Hole. Some might describe this one as It Follows by way of David Cronenberg, written and illustrated by Charles Burns. If that doesn't sell you on Black Hole immediately, I don't know what to say. Set in the 70s, Black Hole is a look at the lives of some suburban Seattleite teenagers. Good start for any horror media, but just you wait. It gets better. There's a disease that swept through town, which affects the youth more than anyone else. It's transmitted between victims through sexual contact and manifests in unexpected and disgusting ways. Often, there are horrifying disfigurements that happen as a result. Some can be effectively hidden and some are unavoidable. But once you get it, you'll always have it. Permanent body horror. After meeting the main characters, you would expect that some sort of plague battle would occur. However, we are treated to a different story. We instead get a portrait of American high school life. Clicks, cruelty, alienation, uncertainty, and more. That's the real horror, right? Well, it is until the murders begin. As teens who catch this disease run away from home and to an encampment full of people like them, strange things start happening. Some folks are less friendly than others, to say the least. The illustrations are black and white, adding to the eerie, surreal feeling of the story. Many of the characters kind of look unsettling before their mutations even take place, and once the disfigurements appear, they become genuinely horrible to behold. And finally, at number one, we've got Beautiful Darkness. Oh man, this one will take you on a wild ride. I don't want to spoil too much, but I feel like I have to set it up a little. Beautiful Darkness begins like a fairy tale, which actually should tell you quite a bit right away. A race of tiny people the size of fruit flies must leave their home and survive in the woods. They're led by Aurora, a kind and sweet girl who's thrust into action. At first, the tale is fun and cute and sort of carefree. The art is definitely cute and colorful, and all the characters seem to be whimsical, if not inconsequential. This changes pretty quickly though. It can be read as a tale concerning how quickly people can revert to base survival instinct and what it means to be human. Now that they've been sent out, they must find a way to survive in the harsh, unforgiving wilderness. This causes factions to splinter and psychotic leaders to take control. Soon, violence and manipulation take over and the group becomes tribalistic and animalistic. Betrayal and contempt are abound, causing characters to develop violent and vindictive personalities. Survival becomes the one and only goal, with many human traits being shed in service of this. Juxtaposition is the name of the game here with the art often lulling readers into a sense of benign security before showing them something truly disturbing. Beautiful Darkness is exactly what the title implies, and I would recommend going in as blind as possible. All right, who's looking at their local library e-catalog as we speak? Maybe calling a local bookstore to see if there are any in stock. There's nothing quite like flipping through a graphic novel for the first time. What did you think of the list? Have you read any of these? Do you plan on reading all the entries? What's your favorite scary graphic novel? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more ostracizing ones from the top five scary urban legends from Egypt. Don Pandemoniac says, strange liquids coming from the faucet, strange noises, and the sounds of screaming. Sounds like my apartment building. Uh, we've all been there. Maybe every slumlord employs ghosts to add authenticity. Commander of Cobra says, matricide is the killing of one's mother, not husband. The word you're looking for is meriticide. Yeah, I must have read the teleprompter wrong. Thanks everyone for making sure I relive my mispronunciations every week over and over again. Angela Lengoloy Van Ruyen says, how about a list of beings that are depicted differently in different cultures? Archetypal beings like the Boogeyman, the White Lady, Virgin Ghost, the Grim Reaper, the Old Woman, Washerwoman or Baba Yaga, etc. And how different cultures describe and view those beings. That could be really fun. Although I think those lists might end up being really, really long. Jason Ingram says, I have a solution for ghouls. Hit thing with a blowtorch or a nuke. Either of those is effective. Do you have any suggestions for weapons in between a blowtorch and a nuke? I just feel like they're like on opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of power and I might need something that's a little more ubiquitous. Craig Bledge says, Jerry only wants high quality tapas. Well, I'll make sure to write that down. Also, nice display picture. And that's all the time we have for today. Before I microwave an entire can of soup, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more powerful panels. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.